Hello, this is the review video for the MATC Banjo 1 class, um, the class that we had on July 2nd, yesterday, 2015. Uh, yesterday we learned how to play Cumberland Gap, a new song. It was kind of a change in our curriculum, but uh, I added it last minute because I thought it would be uh, best for this class and um, a bit easier to play than uh, going around the world. So, Cumberland Gap, I gave you some tabs yesterday. Um, uh, the tabs are taken from a recording by a, a fellow named Land Norris, who recorded it in the 1920s, probably the mid or early 20s. Uh, he plays it clawhammer style, uh, with a very unusual singing technique. But um, uh, my tabs are taken from that. It's kind of a simplified version, though. He does a few things that I didn't put in there. But... Um, uh, so, Cumberland Gap has an A part and a B part, just like Cripple Creek did, uh, and it has some lyrics that you can sing along. And um, let's, uh, I'll, I'll play the thing through, I'll uh, sing some of the lyrics, and then I'll go through it step by step. Let's uh, start by tuning here. Standard G. All right, Land Norris, as I said, played it claw hammer, but we can play it Seeger style too. I think it works better with claw hammer, but um, I'll start with um, Seeger style and then I'll um, play it claw hammer, kind of halfway through. All right, and I'll try to stick to the way I have it in the tabs, but I may change it a bit now and then, but just because I can't help it. Cumberland Gap's not my home, I'm gonna leave old Cumberland alone. So that's, um, as I said, two parts, A part and the B part. We'll start with the A part. The very beginning, um, uh, the first measure goes like this. I'll do it secret style. slide there. So, 
the first beat is just a bum ditty. Here, I'll get a little, a little closer here. A bum ditty on the um, first string, open. Next beat is a slide going up on the third string from the second fret to the fourth fret, um, embedded in a bum ditty. Nope, I, I did that wrong, sorry. The first beat is the bum ditty. The second is a pull off from the, um, on the, th the, the third string, second fret. So, one, two, and then comes the slide. Just with the bum ditty. And then the last beat of that measure is a bum ditty with the th um, first string, second fret. So nice and slow. And then the second measure goes like this. Um, it starts with another bum ditty on the first string open. And another pull off, the same, almost the same thing. And then another pull off down from the second fret of the fourth string. So, like that. And then it goes right into a hammer on on the same string with a bum ditty. And then it ends on the a bum ditty on the third string. So once more. Okay, I'll get really close here to show you how the right the right hand's going with this whole thing. I'm just using my middle finger to fret here. It's just um, the strongest finger. It's kind of easy to play. With this one, I'm doing the Seeger style. And then during that roll that goes like this. It might be easier, um, easy to sort of um, guide your index finger with your thumb. You put your thumb against your next finger so you can pick more easily. It makes more sense when you go fast. That's the A part. The B part um, is all bum ditties. There's no interruption in the bum ditty rhythm. Um, but the, the strange thing about it is that you um, fret down, you, you um, change your, your left hand fingering during a brush down. So I'll do it slowly here. So it's, it starts out with open, just a regular bum ditty, open first string, and then go way up on the ninth fret, right up here. I tend to do my ring finger on this one, I don't know why with a bum ditty. So those first two notes are and then the next bum ditty is strange. It the the downbeat begins with an open string and then you fret the first string on the seventh fret. So two frets lower. 
and that's for the brush. And then the next bum ditty comes down on the seventh fret again. So the whole measure sounds like. up on the first string and doing a bum ditty the whole time. So the right hand just keeps doing this really. The difference is in the left hand. And the second measure repeats the first two beats. Wait, no. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so it, it, it repeats this again. No, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. The second measure goes like this. There we go. Instead of going to the seventh fret, you go down to the fifth fret. There we go. It's hard to do it slowly and think about it so slowly like that because it's really fast. It goes by fast when you're up to speed. Fifth fret. sounds actually particularly good in claw hammer because you can really bang on it. All right, and all together, I'll do it see your style. Nice and slow or not too slow. But. Try it again. I tend to just 
play a chord behind it. So when I go like, uh, Cumberland Gap's not my home, I'm gonna leave old Cumberland alone. When you're playing that fast, it's kind of hard to um, to sing it that fast, actually. So uh, no wonder Land Norris, in his recording, kind of um, kind of slows his singing down while the banjo keeps on playing fast. Uh, but that is that is it. Good luck on Cumberland Gap, and um, see you next week for our last class.